The Clyde Beatty Show. The world's greatest wild animal trainer, Clyde Beatty, with an exciting adventure from his brilliant career. The circus means thrills, excitement, snarling jungle beasts. The circus means fun for young folks and old. But under the big top, you see only a part of the story. The real drama comes behind the scenes, where 500 people live as one family, where Clyde Beatty constantly risks death in the most dangerous act on earth. This master of the big cats has journeyed to Africa and India, hunting down his beasts in their native jungle. All of this is part of the Clyde Beatty story. This adventure is undoubtedly one of the strangest you'll ever hear. It is entitled, The Juju Stones. Whether Harriet and I are in the prairie land of Kansas or on the far continent of Africa, we seem always to be stalked by adventure. The strange and incredible incident of the Juju Stones began one afternoon in Monrovia, Liberia, on the west coast of Africa. My expedition had come down river out of the African interior, where we'd captured elephants, leopards, and other wild animals. While waiting for the ship that would take us home to the United States, we accepted the invitation of an American, a Dr. Jacobs, to visit him at his bungalow. No more tea then, Mrs. Beatty? No, thank you, Dr. Jacobs. Beatty? Uh, no, thanks. I'll have my boy clear away then. Small boy. I for come, boss. Clear the things away, small boy. Yeah, boss. You're connected with the missionary hospital here in Monrovia, Dr. Jacobs. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm not that kind of a doctor. I'm a professor, matter of fact. Right now, I'm out here in Liberia making a study. A very intriguing study. Mm. Is that right, Jacobs? Yes. Of witchcraft. Witchcraft? Juju, as the natives call it. Well, we came across some of that back in the bush. It's not just the backcountry tribesmen who make juju, Beatty. Maybe before you leave Monrovia, I'll be able to show you some very strange and unbelievable things. Clyde, what was that? A stone. Somebody threw it at us through the window. Uh, no use rushing to the window, Beatty, to see you through the stone. There'll be nobody there. Nobody there? It's happened before. I've rushed to look time after time. There's never been anyone. But that's impossible. Yes, yes, I know, I know. But you see, that stone there on the floor is a juju stone. We return to the story of the juju stones in a moment. Here is Clyde Beatty. The night of the day the mysterious stone smashed the window of Dr. Jacobs' bungalow, a telegram reached me from Freetown in Sierra Leone, telling me the ship that was to take us to the United States was delayed and we'd be held in Monrovia several more days. I decided to make use of the time by testing the leopards we'd taken in the interior and had the boys set up the training cage the next morning. I'm going in through the safety cage now, Harriet. Sheik is a beautiful leopard, Clyde. Sure is. I'll only be in with him a minute. I just want to try him out. Be careful, Clyde. Honey, that's how I stay alive. I went in through the outer door of the safety cage, the usual equipment in my hand. A whip in my right hand, a kitchen chair, and a thirty-eight revolver loaded with blanks in my left. Then in through the inner safety cage door and into the big cage with the leopard. Back, she Get back there. Back. Ah, you can't make it out, can you, boy? Hold that out. Back, she Back. Okay. That's enough for the first time. I'm coming out, Harriet. Hey, honey. Don't yell at me when I'm working, huh? Willie's when you do that, Clyde. Sheik's never been worked before. Ah, he'll be all right. They always are if they come at you. That kind's not treacherous. Oh, Jacobs, I didn't see you. Ah, hello, Betty. I'm glad you dropped over. Uh, Harriet, open the runway and let Sheik back to his cage, will you? All right, Clyde. Come on into the bungalow, Jacobs. Sit down. Thanks. Small boy's bringing cola champagne for us. Hope you don't mind. Well... I'm afraid I take my alcohol on the outside, Jacobs. Alcohol rub down after I work my cat. <laughs> no, 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 no. Cola champagne's a soft drink. 
The native cola bean from up in the bush country. Oh, well, fine. Nothing cold is dog good. Pull a chair up to the table, Jacob. Thanks. Uh. Beatty, it's quite an experience to stand there and watch you work. You get to know how exceedingly dangerous a leopard is out here in West Africa. Well, thanks, Jacob. I appreciate that. Uh, when you stare into the leopard's eyes, are you trying to hypnotize it? Ah, I wish I could. It'd make my job easier. No, you control the big cats by making them think they don't scare you, even when they do. Dr. Uh -huh. Jacob, has there been anything more about the juju stone? Yes. Two more this morning. These. Hmm. I brought them with me to show you. Well, they look just like any other stones. Yes, yes, but they pick themselves up and throw themselves at you of their own power. Do you really believe that, Jacob? I've uncovered things here in West Africa, Betty, that seem impossible to explain. Excuse, please, boss. I make for fetch cola champagne. Pastor. Ah, look at the expression on his face. Small boy sees the juju stones on the table. Hmm. And that's a town boy who wears shoes and went to mission school. No basu bush boy, yet he runs at the sight of those stones. Jacobs, have you got any idea why the stones throw themselves at you, as you put it? To kill me. To kill you? Mm -hmm. I'm afraid the truth is, Beatty, I may be in quite a bit of danger. Maybe you can help. Well, if I can. You might take a drive in my car with me this afternoon to visit a man named Hezekiah. Hezekiah's a juju witch doctor. <laughs> And that was when the juju stone started to fly at you, Jacobs, huh? After the first time that I went to see Hezekiah, yes. He lives just out here on the edge of town. We're almost there. Makes it look bad for him. All this really began when the stone started flying at a girl named Charity Newcomb. Charity's about 16, sings in the church choir. Not the kind you'd expect to find witched. Well, Charity went to the witch doctor for help. Uh, to this man that we're going to see? Yes, Hezekiah. The stones let up a while, and then they started again. I heard about it, went to see Hezekiah. Now the stones fly at me. Huh. Yeah. Now, is this the place here? Yes. Back of those mango trees. Termite riddle walls, corrugated iron roof. <laughs> Hezekiah's house. Well, it's a castle in Liberia. Uh, come on, let's run for it. Okay. Ah. Oh, look. Look, baby. Hezekiah's coming to the door. You can see him through this port window. Take a look. Why, he hasn't got any arms. Come in, General Mark. It be raining. Come on, baby. All right. Be seated, General Mark. Uh, we've come about the juju stones. I witched them off, but they come back. I told you that, Doctor. I can help Miss Charity Newcomb no more. Ezekiah, since I came here and questioned you, juju stones have been flying at me. You look with bad eye on juju, Doctor. We part smell juju with the heart. Go home, your country, Dr. Jacobs. Juju stones not follow you. Yeah, very good supper, Harry. Mm, thank you. All right. Mm, not just now, sir. Clyde, do you think that witch doctor is responsible for the juju stone? Well, I don't know. He couldn't throw them himself. Mm. I don't know. I thought he was a pretty dignified old guy. Oh, the leopard. Well, what's up with him? Something's upsetting him. Oh, a, a juju stone. Get a flashlight and follow, Harriet. I'm going to see if I can find who threw that. Clyde. Oh, Clyde, here's the flashlight. Uh, Did you see anyone? No. But whoever threw that stone passed by the cages, and that must have upset the leopard. If anyone did pass by the cages, Clark. Honey, don't let this country get you. But you ran out right after the stone broke the window, and you didn't see anyone. Well, somebody with a good wing could have thrown it from a distance and ducked out of sight. Hey, wait a minute. What, Clark? My flashlight beam picked up movement over there by the elephant compound. 
Come on. Careful. Careful. There he is. Clyde. Wait here. I'll get him. All right, you. What, what do you want? What do you want? Who are you? Really? What are you doing here? Just walking home. You took a detour, Willie, in here around my cages. I hear the leopard. I come and I see somebody throw a stone. Did you see who it was? A small boy. He worked for American, Dr. Jacobs. Here is an important message. And now, back to the thrilling Clyde Beatty drama, The Juju Stone. Mysterious Stones first flew at the native girl, Charity Newcomb, then at Dr. Jacobs, the American professor, and now at Harriet and me, since I accompanied Dr. Jacobs to Hezekiah's house. Willie said he saw Dr. Jacobs' native servant, Small Boy, throw the stone. And the next morning, as Small Boy reached Dr. Jacobs' house to report for work, Jacobs said to me, uh, look, you question him, will you, Beatty? I can't believe Small Boy would have done it. Well, why would he? Whoever threw the stone at me did it to scare me off. I guess I've gotten mixed up in this by going to Hezekiah's place with you. But Small Boy... Here he comes. Oh. Boy and boss. Boy, Mr. Beatty. Good morning, Small Boy. Good morning. Boss, don't you want me for to fetch breakfast chop plenty final? Uh, Small Boy, sit down a minute. Yeah, Mr. Beatty? Small Boy... Last night, a stone flew at me and Mrs. Beatty. <gasps> Juju stone. That's what you call it, but I think it was just an ordinary stone thrown by an ordinary person, like you or me. I? Mr. Beatty, I... Oh, Mr. Beatty, I can overput that thing you say into my head. Uh, Mr. Beatty means it might not have been a juju stone. Somebody said you threw the stone, small boy. Wow! Wow! It's it not my part to do that. Uh, Beatty... Jenkins, uh... I think he's telling the truth. Uh... Come on over to my place. There's a way we can check and be sure. You see, Jacobs, the ground here by our bungalow is still soft. It rained yesterday. Yes. Last night the ground was muddy. If small boy threw the stone, the prints of his shoes will be here on the ground. Yes, that's right. You'd recognize them, wouldn't you? Oh, yes. Yes, there aren't many boys his age or any age who wear shoes in Liberia. I was counting on that. Oh, wait. Hey, look. Here are some shoe prints. No, those are mine. These are the shoes I had on last night. Look here. The sole fits into the print. Oh, yes, I see. And here are Harriet's boot prints. Mm, I see. Fatty. There aren't any other shoe prints. No. No, there aren't. Here are my prints and Harriet's, but there aren't any other footprints. Well, Betty, that was the last place I know to look for Willie. It begins to look like Willie's not in Monrovia. The fact that you caught him right there by your camp after the stone was thrown is suspicious. When he said small boy threw the stone through my window, he was lying. Yes. But there could have been several reasons for that. Here in Africa, there could. I don't think that we from the outside really penetrate the native mind at all. I've had that thought back in the bush country. And I keep thinking, Betty, as you described Willie, uh, I'm sure I've seen him somewhere. Now, if I could just remember... Uh, wait. You remember where you've seen him? Well, I, I could be wrong, but a boy that would answer your description of Willie... Ah, yes. It was down in the waterside, the dark section of town, uh, six or seven weeks ago, before the juju stones began. Yes, Beatty, he was walking with a girl. And I remember now, that girl was Charity Newcomb. The girl the stones flew at when this all started.
We're not likely to find Willie here at Hezekiah's house. Maybe Hezekiah knows more than we thought, Jacobs. Although I don't relish paying him this visit. I know how you feel, Beatty. He's coming. No. Now look here through the porch window. It's not Hezekiah. But to, uh... Oh, he's speaking Poise. I learned a little of it in the interior. What does he say? Just hello. Batua. Hezekiah. Teangalo Guano. Bima, Bima. I o Baglia. Wait here for me, Jacobs. Tua, Tua. Blow Shio. Kuao, Teangalo. Come on, Jacobs. Let's go. What did you find out? I'll tell you on the way. Hurry, drive to my place. Well, is there something wrong? Plenty. <laughs> Well, what is it, Beatty? What did the Quasi man tell you? I couldn't get all of it, but as near as I could make out, Hezekiah decided early this morning to go up into the hills. He got the Quasi man in to watch his house. Why did he want to go? To make juju, the Quasi man says. But words just come from the hills, Jacobs. Yes? Hezekiah's been found dead two miles up in back of Monrovia, killed by a leopard. A leopard? I never heard of one coming so close to Monrovia. That's why there's no time to lose in getting to my camp. Harriet, Harriet, where are you? Why, Clyde, what on earth's the matter? Have you been out to the leopard cages recently? Oh, no. Not in the last couple of hours? No, I haven't. Why? Because one of the leopards must have escaped. Come on. Well, they're all here. Nubia, Sheik, Cleopatra. Yes? What made you think one of them escaped? Uh, there's a report Hezekiah's been killed by a leopard couple of miles from town. There's plenty of leopards back in the bush, but they usually don't come down around Monrovia. Uh, you, you move too fast for me, Beatty. Uh, are, are they all here? They're all here, Jacobs. Beatty, if one of your leopards didn't kill Hezekiah, then a leopard must have come down out of the bush country. We'd better get back in your car and drive up there. Well, we can't go by car. There isn't road. But there is a way. What's that? <laughs> mule, my friend. Liberian mule. Well, there's no one around. No one at all. Uh, when the word's out of leopards on the stalk, you don't find spectators. No, I guess not. Betty, I don't like it. You are used to the big cats, but I... Wait. There's Hezekiah's body. Yes. There's nobody guarding it. No. Probably somebody was posted, but he got cold feet and ran away. Betty, are you sure we ought... This sawgrass is high enough to hide a leopard. We'd better tie the mules here. This is close enough. Oh. Mm. Oh. Oh. Then we can make our way over to that little clearing where the body is. Well, do you think we ought to walk through the sawgrass? (laughs) Well, we may snag our clothes a little, but we shouldn't ride too close. There may be tracks we'd mess up. Oh, I suppose you're right. Here, hand me your reins. Well, all right. Let's go. Now, you stay behind me, and I'll break a path for you through the sawgrass. All right. Now, there's an act to it. Now, stay close behind me. Come on. Oh, what was, what was that? <laughs> a pepper bird, Jacob. Oh. Oh, well, I... I Come on. Me. Careful now. Here's the clear space around the body. What are those? In the dirt. Leopard tracks. Are you sure? I'm sure. And Hezekiah's head. Could leopard claws have done that? They could. I don't mind saying I want to get away from here, Beatty. Now, don't worry, Jacobs. A leopard didn't kill Hezekiah. A leopard did... But you said those were leopard tracks. They are. And the claw marks. Yes, they're a leopard. But you say a leopard didn't kill him? How do you know that? Look at our mules. Look at our mules. That's right, Jacobs. Look at our mules. Beatty, look out. Beatty, are you all right? Yeah. Just got my side. Another juju stone. No, not juju. That stone was thrown by a dead-eye chucker they could use in the major leagues back in the States, and I know who. Come on, Jacob. <laughs> you weren't just walking home this time, Willie. Let me go. Stay still, Willie. Here we are, Jacob. Oh, you, you caught him? I caught him. 
Now we'll take him back to Monrovia where he can explain to the constabulary how he killed a helpless old man with a well-aimed stone. Sugar, Mrs. Beatty? Thanks. Beatty? No, no, I've got lemon. That'll do for me. <laughs> Doggone clever of you, Beatty, about those mules. Oh, now, I don't know. After the hours and hours Clyde spent training horses to get used to the smell of the big cats, I guess he should know well enough that a horse or a mule would bolt like the dickens from any place a leopard had been. And horses and mules can detect the smell of the big cats for hours after they've gone. <laughs> Well, you see how it is, Jacobs. A man's just never a hero to his wife. <laughs> <laughs> no. Well, I came here to West Africa to learn about judo. But I've learned something about leopards and mules. <laughs> now I know a leopard couldn't have been up there. Or our mules would have smelled the leopard odor and bolted. Did Willie really think he could make it look like a leopard had killed Hezekiah Clyde? I'm afraid Willie's a pretty clever boy, as well as a crack shot with a stone. He used a pair of leopard paws to make leopard tracks and claw marks. So it would seem that a leopard had attacked Hezekiah. Oh, it was more subtle than that. There's a powerful secret society in Liberia, the Leopard Society. Savages back in the bush dress in leopard skins and rampage over the country. Willie thought if a real leopard didn't get the blame for the killing, the Leopard Society would. That's right, Beatty. I saw him in jail this morning. Did he finally admit throwing the stones? At you and me, yes. He wanted to teach us not to interfere. Oh, well, did he say why he killed Hezekiah? He'd heard the old witch doctor had gone to the hills to make juju. To make him stop throwing the stones at Charity Newcomb? Well, now, that's an odd thing. Oh, oh, small boy. I for come, boss. Clear away the tea thing, small boy. Yeah, boss. Uh, you were saying, doctor? It's an odd thing. Willie absolutely swears he didn't throw the juju stones at Charity Newcomb. Small boy, for heaven's sake. Oh. I, I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry. Oh, it's all right, Jacobs. It'll wash right out. But he spilled tea all over you. Small boy, what's the matter? You're, you're shaking like a leaf. I go come, boss. Get cloth for clean clothes, Monsieur Beatty. Small boy, what is it? You speak the juju stone. I mentioned the juju stones. What about it? They fly at Missy Charity Newcomb, boss. But that's all over now. No, boss, not so. Juju stones come today. Missy Charity Newcomb hurt bad. But Willie's in jail now. He couldn't have. That's right. You see what I mean about Africa, Beatty? You can never quite solve its mysteries. So ends this intriguing Clyde Beatty adventure. In a moment, you will hear a preview of the next thrilling drama. Here is a preview of the next Clyde Beatty adventure, Beauty and the Beast. Well, Harriet... Everything's all set for the dress rehearsal. Oh, Clyde, I'm so excited. Oh, honey, you'll be great. The act sensation. Huh. Why all the reporters and newsreel cameramen? Just for a rehearsal. Well, they know about your new act. They expect a baptism of fire for you. Oh, I don't know about that. But we'll give them a good show. Right. Uh-oh. The ringmaster's ready to announce you. Attention is directed to the Seal Arena, presenting the newest and most sensational wild animal act ever performed by a woman. <laughs> That's you. For the first Are you ready? Time in any arena, three of the animal now tell me something, Mike. You nervous? Yes. Together. Especially with all those cameras out there. Oh, when you get in the cage, you'll forget them. Clyde, the you'll stand by. I'll be in a safety Adam cage. <sighs> Side by side on her Pretty back, now. Simba, the black-maned African lion, and Brimba, the royal Bengal tiger. Trained Ready. and presented by the greatest woman animal trainer of all time. There's your cue. Good luck. And only Harriet Beatty. 
Beauty and the Beast is a true, dramatic story about my lovely wife, Harriet. In it, though I'm mostly in the safety cage or in sickbed, a thrilling climax is reached that gave me just about the greatest satisfaction in all my years of animal training. All stories are based upon incidents in the career of the world-famous Clyde Beatty and the Clyde Beatty Circus. The Clyde Beatty Show is produced by Shirley Thomas. The Juju Stones was written by Roy Williams. All names used were fictional, and any resemblance to persons living or dead is purely coincidental. This is a Commodore production.